Well, because for me, it's like, so I think INFJs or this INFJ, they have a lot of like, you know, nicey, like you should do this because it's nice. And I agree for the most part, but then sometimes like certain things, like, you know, with certain political policies, I'm like, well, these are the implications of this nice thing carried out to the full extent. And I think they don't really hold a really sound, logical, philosophical, and moral ground. And I'm like, this is what you should know to make yourself think differently. And for me, that's what I try to do. But because I think I'm communicating from a different area, like, I feel like I should be, I think I should be communicating as like, this is bad because it does this and this and this. But from what I, how I communicate, it's this is standing on something that's wrong completely and you have to organize it this way. Because for me, you have to have a principle or some kind of foundational belief or philosophy that everything else stands on. And if that is corrupt, then everything else will be corrupt and like you're thinking. And I think that's what's wrong with, you know, most of the world today and blah, 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 blah. And just like with physics, like if you have a like some kind of premise that you stand on that isn't correct, then the rest of your physics will be wrong. And I think that's why they kind of can't complete, you know, their whole unified field theory anyway. <laughs> that's, Pew! yeah, that's the kind of, I guess that's an example of how I go from one thing to another. That are related, and yet we were here, and then we were in physics in the universe so the thing is though like i take that principle it's that principle that i'm i'm applying to different subjects just to show how it all makes sense yeah because that's how i deal i think i deal with underlying principles and facts and then i'll have one fact with it but you can have one thing fit in that mold and that's where you can have a multitude of different subjects go in and fit that you know, mold or principle. Wow, man, it's weird. Like, I feel like I learn things when I talk out loud sometimes. Or when I... Because I get new ideas and they feed off of each other and then it... So it's kind of cool. That's why I like talking. That's why I like debating. And this is how I can talk a lot. <laughs> but yeah. Um, Let me see. In school, I think INFJ, INFJs are... They like doing good in school. And I think INFJs are kind of people pleasers in a way, not just in a bad way. And everyone, yeah, yeah. I like we've talked about this before. And I'm like, what? Because I feel like that has the connotation of sort of being a doormat. Um, and I'm not a people pleaser in that I like. In I I don't know. There's like the good connotation of people pleaser and the bad connotation, and I would say yeah, I'm a person who's in the good way because I do want to make people happy um and help them but I'm not going to like just completely forget about myself in that effort so that's the line between people pleaser and absolute doormat for me I feel like the best way that I can help someone is to leave them alone or like to not do anything to them because I don't know because my whole kind of philosophy is like, I want to be able to do what I want to do. And I want you to do what you want to do. And I don't really care to please other people. But yeah, I think INTPs and INFJs can work really well together. And I think they both like certain things about each other. Like, I like the fact that she cares about people. And I like the fact, like, she's, she's smart too. So she can kind of go back and forth with different topics. The only time I feel like sometimes I go too deep and I feel like if you go too deep on a subject, you can kind of lose an INFJ because INTPs are so out here and INFJs are not like that. And it, it goes both ways too, because if INFJs are too like structured, then you, they lose INTPs. So you can lose them both ways if you're too extreme in any one of your um, talking points. But yeah, and then I think INFJs are kind of attracted to the spontaneousness, or they like being around the spontaneous nature of an INTP. Um, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think um, the two personality types have a very good complement uh, in what's similar and what's different. Um, it's not so similar that it's boring, um, but not so different that it, it causes conflict. Um, we have differing 
worldviews and philosophies about different things, but like I think it's um, beneficial to both of us to talk about them. And uh, I do sort of bring the emotional caring side to things, and he um, looks at underlying causes and like those big idea kind of things that I wouldn't really think about. So, um, yeah, I just think uh, if you're an INTP or um, an INFJ, you should find one of the other type because, I mean, if we are representative of the wider population, then it's a very cool intellectual friendship. <laughs> And hopefully this video wasn't really boring, because I think I am boring sometimes. I don't know. <laughs>